Hello, and welcome to Diabetes Deep Dives. My name is Candice, and I'm from Diabetes Canada. I'm so pleased that you're joining us today. Diabetes Deep Dives is a series of videos designed to dive deeper and beyond the surface of different areas of diabetes management. We are exploring those burning questions that you may have by featuring dynamic and engaging guests with knowledge or lived experience on the topic. Our goal is to share information in ways that will spark continued interest and learning and leave you with practical tips and tools that you can easily use. We'll be dropping a new video every month, so subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell to be notified about new content. You can also check us out on social media to find out when the next one will be posted to our YouTube channel. Just a reminder that the information shared in these videos in no way replaces the advice and direction from your healthcare team. If you have questions about your care, please speak to your healthcare provider and team to make sure that you are getting the best advice. In this episode, our guest speaker, Gabrielle Schmidt, will offer her practical advice on navigating the complex world of counting carbs when enjoying your meals with different ingredients all mixed together. Gabrielle will walk us through the key learnings that we hope you will get from this video. Gabrielle is a registered dietitian, certified educator, and pump trainee. She currently works at LMC Healthcare as a diabetes educator and clinical coordinator for the Diabetes Education Program. She has been living with type 1 diabetes for 25 years, and ultimately, she is passionate about driving change in the healthcare provider approach to help empower all people living with diabetes. We hope that you will find this video informative and that it will support you in managing your blood sugar while enjoying your favorite mixed dishes. And now over to Gabrielle. Hi everyone, and welcome to Diabetes Canada Deep Dives. Today's topic is tips and tricks on carb counting. My name is Gabrielle Schmidt. I'm a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator in Ottawa. So let me first start by saying that carb counting is a very difficult skill to learn. You may have learned this early on in your diagnosis, or maybe you're learning this for the first time. But when we learn carb counting, we learn about food labels, looking at the grams of carbs, subtracting our fiber for a total amount of carbs, or maybe learning how to use a food scale. But what if our environment changes, right? We don't have access to these food scales and food labels in a restaurant, out with friends, etc. So today I want to help teach you some tips and tricks to help you learn more about practical skills. So we're going to learn practical carb counting methods how fat, protein, and the glycemic affects carb counting, hidden sources of carbs, how to make a best guess when carb counting, using technology to help, and insulin strategies. So here we're looking at practical methods. So you'll see on the left-hand side, actually two in one. So we're looking at both the plate method and also a visual like using your hand. So if you're looking at the plate method here, you'll see that in the plate, you're divided in three. You have your grains and starches in one quarter of the plate, protein in the other quarter of your plate, and half your plate is vegetables. Although this may not be new to you, you can actually use this method, let's say in a restaurant, right? You can order a dish that might mimic this, and it might help you look at and understand more about your carbo car carbohydrate portions. Um, so looking at your quarter of your plate, now maybe the restaurant plate is much bigger, but at least you have a better understanding of how much carbohydrate is in your plate versus a mixed dish or something like that. At the same time, you can see the hand. So beside the grains and starches, you have a fist. So that one fist here, you're looking about a cup of food. So if you have a big plate at the restaurant and you think you have about two fists of food, that's approximately two cups. So then you can do the math in terms of what you think the carb count is. Another practical method that I like to use is actually using a dry measuring cup to actually serve the food on someone's plate or my own plate. So instead of using like a ladle or a big spoon, I don't know how much that ladle or that spoon is actually going to give me in terms of the amount of food. But if I actually use um, a one cup measuring cup, I know that I'll be serving myself one cup of food and I can do my carb counting a little easier that way. So using a dry measuring cup is actually quite useful for actually serving the food on someone's plate. Same thing for liquids. If you actually want to measure the amount of liquid going into a smoothie, for example, maybe pouring it up in a measuring cup to see how much milk you're getting or uh, fruit, et cetera, to give you a better sense of the amount of carbohydrate. 
Here's another document to show you more visuals. So just understanding more household objects versus your hand. But certainly you may not have access to these things if you're at a restaurant, but you have your hand, right? So looking in at your fist with again, one cup, the palm of your hand is about a quarter or half a cup, sorry. Um, the palm here is about three ounces, a handful, another ounce. So looking at different ways to use your hand to look at, you know, uh, how much I may be eating in my plate of food. You could even maybe print this off and have it handy for the first couple of times just because you might not be sure, um, but you'll get used to it. So if you start using this now, even at home, when you're in a restaurant or someone else's house to eat, it might get easier over time. So looking at both household objects and also your hands could be another practical tip to help you with your carb counting a little more accurately. So what about non-carbs? So we know that when we eat carbohydrate, if we just eat the carbohydrate alone, it's pretty predictable how it might act in the body. But if I have something that's high fat and high protein with the carb food, it's actually gonna slow down the absorption of the carb. So if I take insulin for my carb counting, and I think, you know, when I eat it alone and I think that it's going to work within two hours, et cetera, it might not be the same thing when we're actually adding something like cheese or something that's deep fried or something of that sort. You may have that experience yourself when you eat something like pizza or nachos, right? The spaghetti or the noodle itself or the chip itself, uh, maybe the chip because it's higher in fat, but let's say the noodle itself is pretty predictable in terms of how it affects your sugar. But when you add a lot of that cheese or a lot of that meat sauce, it might change the way that it works. So looking at strategies to help you with that could be either using the extend bolus feature if you're using an insulin pump. If you're on injections, you might wanna split your injection in two. And of course, discussing this with your diabetes team to help you learn more about those features and understanding how to split your injection. But just understanding the fact that you know, if I have a plate of food and it seems to be quite high fat, high protein, the outcome is going to be different than if you're just having a carbohydrate with more predictable food on the plate, like a side salad and a small piece of fish or something like that. And what about the glycemic index? So the glycemic index is a way to look at how carbohydrate is going to impact the sugar, just the carbohydrate alone. So an example would be, let's say bread. If I'm eating a white uh, bread, a one slice of white bread, my blood sugar might spike fast uh, versus if I have something like sourdough bread or rye bread, surprisingly, even though they are still white by visually looking at it, um, the way that it's made and fermented, actually it's quite different. And so the outcome or the absorption of the carbohydrate may look differently than just having that white bread. So if I have to pre bolus let's say for my sandwich with white bread, I may not need to pre-bolus if I'm having something with sourdough bread or rye bread because the carb, even though the carb count might be similar, it's how the carbohydrate is actually behaving in my body once I've eaten it. So again, it's not all about carb counting, learning the grams of carbohydrate, but understanding kind of what foods do what. And when we pair it on top with fat and protein, again, right, understanding that there might be a change in the outcome of your sugar. And what about those hidden sources of carbohydrate? So certainly if you're at a restaurant, right, this is my, this might be where you might come to um, face this challenge, just because if you're at home, you have more control in terms of what you're putting into your recipes, et cetera. So if I'm at a restaurant, remember to look at the sauces, the salad dressings, the condiments, the breaded or crispy options, right? Those are going to be more or higher in carbohydrates. So if you're having, let's say, chicken fingers, right? Sure, the chicken is protein, it may not be counted, but if it's breaded, then you would look at not only maybe higher fat, but also looking at carbohydrate because of that breading. Milk alternatives, so not all milk is created equally. So one cup of cow's milk, for example, is not the same thing as one cup of oat milk, or if you're looking at almond milk, so looking at the food label, because that's often um, available to you when you are purchasing the milk alternatives, uh, but be mindful of that as well. And some nuts and seeds. So usually when we learn about carb counting, we say, you know, don't count your nuts and seeds, but that's not true. Not all nuts are created equally. So looking at cashews, for uh, example, those are actually kind of high in carbohydrate, depending on the amount that you're having. But I would actually count that towards your carb amount if you are eating, let's say, about a third of a cup um, of cashews compared to if you're eating peanuts or almonds. So here are some examples 
right? So ketchup, for example, a quarter of a cup of ketchup, often very common when we're eating, especially during the summertime, right? That can add about 15 grams of carbohydrate to your meal. But often we might forget about it because it, it doesn't visually look like a carbohydrate that we might usually count for, like the bread or a fruit exam for, as example. So technology. So we're lucky today that we live in a world where, you know, we have access to lots of things at our fingertips in terms of information. And that includes carb counting, not only just carbohydrate, but all nutrition and nutrients found in our foods. So I often tell my patients, you know, start maybe by Googling it. So if you don't have access to a food label or a food scale, or really you're just looking at a plate of food and you're not sure, but you have access with your phone, you could Google it. You go in your search bar and you just type in something like, I don't know, um, strawberries, right? And then you can actually choose the amount of strawberries that you're going to be eating and it will come up with the carb count for that amount of food, all, as well as the fiber and all the other nutrition for that food. The other thing I like to teach my patients is the fast foods, restaurants, nutrition information. So if you actually go on Google and do a quick search, I can actually do a live demonstration here to show you how easy it is. So let me just stop sharing my screen. If I go to Google and let's say I'm going to Subway for lunch, okay, and then I'm going to click on Subway. Let's see if I can find it somewhere else here. <laughs> um, okay. So nutrition. I go down to nutrition data tables. It's a PDF. So you can actually print this if you're often going to Subway. Uh, you can print this, keep this handy, ready to go. You can actually find this in your phone as well. Okay, so PDF comes up. And in the PDF, I'll make this a bit bigger here. You see here the carbohydrate and the dietary fiber. So you can do the math. Okay, so if I'm looking at perhaps the turkey, 43 minus five, so I'm looking at about 38 grams of carbs for a, my six inch sandwich. Okay, so you can literally, like, like, I, said, like I said, print this off, have it handy, uh, take a picture with your phone. Uh, but again, keeping track of the things that you're often ordering can be very helpful. And maybe it's once or twice you need to look it up. And then after that, you'll know it by heart. So that's just an information of how easy it is to find uh, nutrition information, your carb counting online. So let me just share my screen. Okay, perfect. The other thing that we can do as well is if you again look online, our Canadian nutrient file has a huge array of different foods that we've come up with over the years in terms of the nutrition available to us. So again, just looking up a certain food, you'll find all the nutrients related to that food, including the carb count. Another thing that we all use these days for multiple reasons are apps on our phone. So for example, Carbs and Cows, Carb Manager, My Fitness Pal, Calorie King, these are examples of carb counting apps. So you might be already using a diabetes app or um, app, not for anything, right? So downloading another app on your phone to help with this. And it's not that you need to use it every time that you need to carb count. I mean, you can, but it could be for those things that you're just really not sure about. There's often big databases of different types of foods, ethnicities, all types of foods available to you, different restaurants. Even if you travel to a different country, you'd be surprised what you can see there or different chains. So again, using these apps uh, when you want can really help. And like I said, if you often visit these restaurants or have these meals over and over again, you might need to look it up once or twice a few times, uh, and then you'll know it off by heart after, after a few times of looking it up. So these are some of many apps available to you. These are the most popular that I see, but certainly looking on your phone and looking either in your app store to see what's available to you when you type in carbohydrate counting, you'd be surprised what you can see there. So take a look. So of course, when we're carb counting, we're often doing that to take our insulin with our carb ratio, or perhaps just looking at learning more about carbohydrates so we can come up with a carb ratio for you. So here's some strategies to help you with your insulin, but also to help your insulin work better, especially when there's a situation where you're not sure about the carb count. So consider taking your correction if you're a little high before eating. So at least get some insulin circulating in your system. If you're really not sure 
If you can't pre bolus for your meal, making sure that you have at least a correction going in so that you can be maybe less um, above target when you're eating your food. Again, if you can and if you can remember. If you're at a restaurant, don't pre bolus at a restaurant. You don't know what's happening in the kitchen. There might be a fire, there someone might be delayed, whatever it is. So really make sure that you're only bolusing when your plate of food arrives at your table. Then you can take a look at it, do some calculation, maybe looking at your hands to see if it mimics the plate method or whatever it is. And then bolus when you have a better understanding of your card count. And again, when it's in front of you. Use your extend bolus feature on your pump like we talked about in terms of high fat, high protein, certainly a situation that would happen more often in a restaurant. And if there's something that you're often eating in a restaurant that you really wanna get correct in terms of bolusing, maybe discussing this with your diabetes team, taking note. So maybe the first time you're not actually using extend bolus, you just take a, you take your insulin as you usually would and see what happens to your sugar. And then maybe you'll see that maybe in four hours or six hours, you need more insulin. Well, we can use the extend bolus feature to help you with that. Be careful. It's better to underestimate than to overestimate when we're looking at our carb count. I would say if you're really not sure, give it a guess, but try to guess a little lower than maybe what you would think is actually in your plate. Um, so better to do that than to overdo it and then have too much insulin on board and cause a low. If you're really not sure, bolus for some, right, or half if you think of an idea of how much it is, monitor and adjust as needed. We can always give corrections later on, but certainly you want to give it enough time. You don't want to give a correction half an hour after eating. You want to at least wait two, three, four hours to give your correction. Um, so just keep that in mind. Just give some before if you can. Um, and if you have no idea, you can eat your plate of food, think of how much you ate and go from there, right? Some insulin is better than no insulin. So I hope that today we learned about a few things. Ultimately, we know carb counting is hard work. We never expect perfection. You shouldn't as well, right? That is a lot of work to just do that. Um, so be mindful of that skill. Use your hands or visuals to help you understand your portion. So like we talked about those household items, if you have them around, but certainly using your hand is good enough. Model the plate method at a restaurant when possible. So if you're at a restaurant and you want to order something, if you can see if it fits more into that plate method versus a mixed dish, certainly, you know, it, it might increase your chances of getting a more accurate carb counting, but don't make that your deciding factor for what you're going to order. But it could be a helpful strategy for sure. Look out for those hidden sources of carbohydrate, like we said, in those sauces and the condiments. Pay attention to how high fat and high protein meals affect your sugars and discuss with your team. So maybe you won't use the extended bolus or give insulin a different way. You'll just see how your sugar reacts to a certain food. Take note of that and see what happens. And you can discuss that with your diabetes team. A best guess is better than no guess and use technology to help with your carb counting. I hope today's presentation helped you a little more with your carb counting skills. And like I said, please reach out to your diabetes team if you need more uh, review or skills or practical knowledge on learning how to carb count. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us to dive deeper into how carb counting can help support your diabetes management. Please take the opportunity to let us know what you learned, what you liked, and how we can do better. You can do that by posting a comment in the comment section below or by clicking the link to the feedback survey in the description box. If you have ideas for other topics you'd like to learn more about, you can include that in the comments or feedback survey as well. You can also find the website link to the Canadian nutrient file mentioned in the video in the description box, as well as some additional helpful resources on this topic from Diabetes Canada. If you are looking for more resources about diabetes management, please visit our website at diabetes.ca. You can also email us at info at diabetes.ca or call our info line at 1-800-BANTING. That's 1-800-226-8464 and speak to one of our information and support specialists who can address your needs. Thanks again for joining us and see you next time.